Baronero Farage. Mr. Van Rompuy, it's been a long time. Uh, lovely to see you. Today's November the 5th, a big celebration festival day in England. Uh, just over 400 years ago, there was an attempt to blow up the Houses of Parliament with dynamite and to destroy our Constitution. Uh, that was a violent approach. You, of course, have taken the dull, technocratic approach to all of these things. And indeed, uh, what you and your colleagues uh, say time and again, uh, you talk about e-initiatives and what you're going to do about unemployment. Uh, but the reality is, nothing in this union is getting any better. Indeed, the accounts, I thought it was 18 years in a row, the accounts haven't been signed off for. I'm now told that it's 19, and you're doing your best to tone down any criticism. Uh, whatever growth figures uh, you may have, they're pretty anemic, and youth unemployment in the Mediterranean is 50% plus in several states. And, of course, you'll notice there is now a rise in opposition, real opposition, and much of it pretty ugly opposition, not stuff that I myself uh, would want to link hands with. You know, it was three and a half years ago that I got into some trouble by questioning who your tailor was. Um, and they fined me 3,000 euros for doing so. Of course, I clearly was wrong. Look at you today. You are the smart, snappy young man around town. But there's no question that your legitimacy hasn't grown in those three and a half years. In fact, neither you nor the Commission, even the Parliament, none of that connection with ordinary people has got greater. And that's why there is an electoral storm coming. You know, something very dramatic is going to happen in the third week of May next year. But you can stop it. You can stop these dark forces, as you see them, swarming into this Parliament by actually admitting openly that the time has now come to legitimise or otherwise these institutions by holding free and fair referendums in the Member States as to whether your position should even exist. Because the French and Dutch said, Mr Van Rompuy, you shouldn't exist. They vetoed it, and yet you continued regardless. Are you prepared to sit there and wait for the electoral storm, or will you take the initiative and do your best to legitimise democratically this European Union or not? Then, to ten year remark, il y a trois ans et demi, on me disait que j'avais l'allure d'un employé de banque. Maintenant, à moi seul, je peux arrêter une tempête électorale. Ah, voilà, c'est une évolution invraisemblable. Qu'un homme puisse venir avoir la, la capacité d'arrêter de, de, une soi-disant tempête électorale. Comme évolution, ça peut compter. Si ce ne venait pas de vous, Monsieur Farage, je m'en réjouirais. Mais puisque ça vient de vous, ça ne m'intéresse pas. Merci beaucoup. Merci. Grazie, onorevole Varrompoi. La parola del Farage. Well, just for a moment there, it got fun. You got angry with me, and it all became impassioned. And that was brilliant, uh, because prior to that, it was the usual dirge, wasn't it? It was Mr. Van Rompuy talking about a single supervisory mechanism, a resolution fund. What real people are talking about is the lack of jobs, the insanity of, in our case, opening the doors next year to the whole of Romania and Bulgaria. Um, so maybe, Mr. Van Rompuy, the answer is to ignore my pleas for a referendum, uh, but just to sort of come out and start attacking me and the Eurosceptics, and maybe then we'll make it a real European election. But I warn you, the language that you and the rest of the European Commission use is not the way that ordinary people speak, it's not how they feel, and honestly, you sit there in front of that flag behind you, that flag and your position were rejected by the French and Dutch in 2005, you've carried on regardless, you have no legitimacy, let's fight it out on the battleground next May.